Hey everybody, how's it going? It is spring. It's been weird weather this year. It gets super hot and then super cold and then it rains and then it's sunny and then we have snowstorm again. What a strange, strange winter. It's uh, it's just above freezing today and uh, I thought a nice day or nice morning to do some work on the tailgate of the old 6.5 turbo diesel. I have my 572 XP here. You guys know that follow along. I bought this saw last year. Um, I've always wanted a brand new power saw and have never had one. This is the first brand new power saw I've ever had. Most of my power saws were bought blown up and I rebuilt them myself. In fact, 90% of the saws that you guys see me running, the ones that I say I love are ones that I built. But this one's brand new. I did run this saw a little bit this winter and it's a nice saw. It still needs to be broken in. It's got uh, a little bit of a stumble off idle. Apparently these do that when they're breaking in. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it. Other than that, uh, this saw starts, runs, idles. It's got good power, uh, wick and anti-vibe. It's just a great saw. What I'm gonna do here, um, I bought a full wrap for it. One thing about this saw after running it, I like a full wrap now, friends. I used to value low stumps over being able to cut from both sides of the tree without backfiring. You guys, you guys know the deal. Um, and again, some people prefer full wraps. Some people prefer half wraps, but the more full wrap saws I have, the more when I grab a half wrap, wrap saw, um, I just find that I just, I like being able to flip the saw over and always cutting on a pulling chain. Uh, for me, using a pulling chain for as often as I can, just it, it, I find it's a little bit safer for me and I don't wear myself out as quick. So, But again, to each their own. I know some guys back bar all day long. and um, But for me, I like working on a pulling chain. Also, um, the nice thing about Husqvarna, and one of the reasons why I'm a Husky guy, is you can buy these super inexpensively. So... Anyhow, let's put a full wrap on this thing. I'll show you guys the full wrap kit if you buy one of these and you want one. I'm actually really impressed. Uh, it was super cheap to buy, and it comes with a whole bunch of extra stuff, not just the wrap bar. So I'll bring you guys in, and let's put a full wrap and other uh, accessories onto this 572 XP. Okay, so I bought, bought this kit. And again, friends, this saw was just a regular model, no heat. Um, if I had my choice, and maybe if I did it again, I would have bought something else. I just wanted a 572 that day, and this is all my dealer had. They didn't have any heated models. And I wanted this saw with a 32-inch bar. And they, uh, they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and actually said, well, we're only going to sell it with a 24-inch bar. Which again, kind of kind of funny, but so I'm gonna run this saw with the 24 inch bar that was supplied with it for a while. I blew it off. Just just a super super nice saw. I've been very impressed with this thing. Okay, so in the kit you get a set of dogs, uh, a chain roller, all the hardware. These look like the same dogs as a 372. Uh, you get what looks like. A larger West Coast cover. Uh, one thing I noted, friends, this cover here, the OE cover, um, clears chips really, really well. I was noodling with this thing, noodling ash. Normally, ash is going to really plug it up in here. Um, this thing cleared chips better than any side cover I've ever had on a chainsaw. So um, I might throw this on one of my 372s if it fits. I'm not sure. So this is the West Coast cover. I guess I'll rock this for a while. One thing I don't like, and I'm going to say this straight up because if I see something I don't like, I'm going to tell you guys, no captured bar nuts. This one has the captured bar nuts. I really like that. I don't know about you guys, but I've dropped many a bar nut in the woods. And uh, so kind of a little bit of a drawback. It also comes with more hardware here and what looks like what looks like a stiffer upper mount for West Coast falling. Um, on the West Coast, you guys know they run long bars, and long bars need stiffer mounts generally. So, 
Let's see what we got here. So, anyhow, let's get this changed up. Looks like four bolts here. Let's put this thing on its side. There you go. You guys can see. Pretty neat that I could buy a brand new saw. I, uh... <laughs> Again, friends, I remember years ago, you'd buy a saw for 40 or 50 bucks and just pray that it didn't need a ton of work. Of course, almost every $40 saw I ever bought was blown up. And you guys watch me change bottom end bearings and stuff and you say, wow, you're fast at that. Yeah, that's because I uh, <laughs> bought a lot of blown up saws back in the day. I noticed they changed to the Torx, like still has. I like that. Torx are a great fastener. And this one, you don't have to take out. This is just a limiter, uh, a limiter tab. Which keeps the uh, saw from over-traveling. Uh, question of the week last week. I had a fella ask how to take the uh, anti-vibe off, and I'm going to do that right now. I chuckled. He couldn't figure out how it comes off because he didn't realize there's a bolt through there. And I chuckled because years ago, uh, I had a similar situation. I was like, how does this come apart? Oh, and it looks like the bottoms are actually Allen's, so I'll grab that. That's kind of weird. This came off with it. There you go, there's the stock wrap. Okay, uh, anti vibe right here. I don't know if this is gonna be a Torx. Yes, it is. I'm not even sure if that new one's stiffer, but I assume that it is. Let's see if it's the same part number. Yes, it is. So, oh. Well, Interesting. Uh, I'll put this one on anyways. We'll see what it does. Not liking how that bolt's going in. That would be my luck. Strip the threads on a brand new power saw. <laughs> that would totally be my luck. And I would just laugh. Anything that you can break, you can repair. Okay, and I'll line this up. There you go. Okay, let's throw this wrap on. I believe this goes on the bottom. It goes like that. I'm gonna say, these, these new Huskies, incredible. If you're looking for if you're looking for a does everything smooth saw that's not too heavy, this is the saw for you. Um, I was thinking about getting a 500i. And that option's still on the table. I've got lots of time to get more saws, but uh, I thought I've had such good luck with my huskies that this is going to be the saw for me. My 562. I bought that saw to prove to myself that I didn't like the new saws and I'm an old saw guy and that's the truth. And I was going to buy it, rebuild it and then sell it. And that was five or six years ago. And <laughs> I put a lot of time on that saw. And I, I, I absolutely love that 562. That's a good does everything saw. You know, if you're a homeowner or a firewood cutter, and you want something that's fast, just a fun saw to run that's lightweight, good anti-vibe, great anti-vibe. I, I think, and I again, I haven't run every new saw, but I've heard it and I tend to agree is these 5 Series Huskies are 
the smoothest saws, period. Um, they, they're so smooth, they feel like they're not running. You feel no vibration or anything when you're running these. It's actually a, it's actually a weird sensation. The first time you run one, they're, they're literally that smooth, especially if you're used to running old saws. Friends, I gotta flip this around here. These go in there really stiff. There we go. Open that up. This is weird. These bolt holes line up so well. Oh, and I see there's an extra bolt. This one in here. They even put metal inserts in the handle on the bottom, which again, often, often if a wrap's going to pull out, it's going to be there. So good job, Husky. I don't know. Husqvarna just, to me, they're just, they, they build a quality power saw and they're always updating them. Like they want their saws to continually grow as they sell them longer. Some people think, you know, so, some people tell me they don't like that because, oh, they're changing carburetors. and. But, I mean, if there's a problem and they think they can make it better, and they do, I'm all for that. Okay, bend this forward a little bit. Switch this down. Full rappy oh. <laughs> oh, that'll buff out, eh, friends? There you guys go. Full rappy dappy on my 572. Okay, and then I'll just put the dogs on. It's funny, eh? In winter, it's dead quiet here. You never hear anything. Summertime comes and it's just alive. Little critters running around and birds. Everybody's getting ready to have babies. I guess I was getting ready to have a baby about this time last year. Interesting. Baby Charlie's doing well, friends. She's uh, growing, moving around. Not crawling yet, but rolling. A uh, little bit of standing. If you hold her, she'll... She'll put her hands on it. Just love that little girl. What a what a gift. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we did what we had to do and had that little girl lost here. Okay, I'm just gonna put that chain roller on. Right there. I gotta say, this kit, for the price of it, like wow. I you pay more than that for a side cover a lot of times. You get everything. Like these 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 husky kits, I can't I can't believe you can buy OEM stuff this cheaply. It's it's uh it's quite a surprise. Uh I don't always need the big dogs, but uh some of our trees here are poplar or cottonwood. Um some of the some of the ash, some of the elm have really thick bark, especially the cottonwood here. Uh, it's not uncommon to have bark that's, you know, two inches thick on a big old cottonwood. Um, I like the big dogs, but the main reason why I like big dogs is I run long bars mainly so I can stand up when I'm bucking, and uh, with the long with the long bars and the big dogs the saw doesn't tilt forward and go into the mud that's the that's the main reason okay well there we go okay i'm gonna put the top cover and bar on and let's have a final look at this thing okay there you guys go just got the 24 inch bar on there and uh i'm just gonna run it the way it comes for now i could put a 32 on it but 
or 28. Very nice saw. I really have no negatives with this saw so far. I haven't spent a ton of time with it, but honestly, um, I have a 576 and I'll grab it just to compare. There's my 576. I've had this for quite a few years and uh, this replaced this. These are nice saws too. They're, uh, they got lots of power. They're very smooth. Uh, this saw, I remember the first time I ran one of these, I was like, wow, wow, is this thing smooth? You know, they, uh, they start and idle good. This thing will probably fire right up. It's been parked all winter. I shouldn't have touched the trigger because it is an auto tune, but honestly, friends, all these saws, these 5 Series Huskies are great saws. I know these had some teething issues. Um, a lot of blown up 576s back in the day. And I think the main thing was is um, all these autotunes do not tolerate dull chains. But anyways, friends, I thought this is a good saw. I don't run it much, though, which is funny. And the reason why, it's a little heavy. Um, I think they got the weight down on this saw or the balance down. This isn't a super lightweight saw. Uh, it's definitely heavier than my 562, but um, all in all, I definitely prefer this, this to that. Whoa, there we are. This to that, friends. Um, I just, I think, I think they, they learned from the 576, which was supposed to replace the 372 and did not, but... They did several things in these newer ones. There's a lot of room underneath the muffler. Keeps the cases cooler. Um, just little odds and ends on these that I think really have made these into, you know, contenders. Uh, I know these have big uh, bearings in the bottom ends. And uh, I just like this saw. So, anyhow, it was just puttering today. And uh, thought I'd share this with you guys. And again, since this thing's been sitting all winter... Hitting the purge bulb, put it on choke. go sometimes it's nice to not carry a screwdriver and i have to admit that i know i'm known as a vintage saw guy you know the old home lights and stuff but sometimes it's nice when you're doing work to just grab a saw and go and these these 572s are just great and like i said i love my 562 uh my 562 looks like it was dragged behind a truck uh, i put tons of time on that the fellow that had it before me uh he was a commercial cutter uh, up north was the story I got. And he run that thing steady for, I think, four cutting seasons. And uh, finally it blew up. But how many hours he put on that thing, he put a lot. So um, I don't cut every day. So I, I foresee no issues with this. But once again, friends, if you are looking for a 70 cc class power saw and you want reliability these things are known for being bulletproof it's really hard to find one that's blown up they put bigger bearings in these these are very robust saws and uh you know i, I that's kind of why i went with this over some of the other contenders nothing against the other saws in this class but uh this one this one when i picked it up i was like you know what i love husqvarna um, I love the 5 Series Auto-Tune saws. I might as well continue on in the line. And when they replace this, I'll probably get one of those too. Anyhow, friends, just puttering around. It's a beautiful day. Hope you guys are having good weather where you're at. And uh, just sharing what I'm doing with you guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're going cutting very soon. I might even go cutting today. Uh, I'll be sure to bring the camera when I do that. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. Time for question of the day. Today's question comes from Jeffrey Langenstein.
Jeff's been on this channel for a long time and he's been emailing me for a long time. How's it going, Jeff? Jeff wants to know, he's rebuilding a 372 XP and he wants to put a 268 Husqvarna piston in it, which is a common swap. The reason why you do that is you get a lighter piston, it'll make the saw more energetic, it'll be snappier. He wants to know, what does it usually take to do a piston swap like that in a saw? Well, first things first, take the old piston out, put the wrist pin in, halfway in your old piston, and slide it into the new piston and check to see how much higher the dome of the new piston is and the skirts of the new piston. A lot of times the skirts are shorter. If they're shorter, you don't have to worry about the piston hitting the case on the way down. If the piston's taller, say that piston's 30 thousandths taller and you have a 50 thousand squish with your old piston with a base gasket. Well, if you put that piston in with another base gasket, and it's 30 thou taller, you'll have 20 thou squish. If it doesn't fit, you're going to need a lathe usually. Um, if it's too short, if it's too tall, then you're going to have to get creative and make a thicker base gasket or, or something like that to raise the cylinder higher. So that's why a lot of saw builders have lathes because you can adjust things to exactly where you want them. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.